Welcome back. Democrats in disarray. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi delaying the infrastructure vote last night again, apparently hopeful it will happen today. Uh, that's because progressives will not bend. They ramped up their battle with moderates uh, like Senator Joe Manchin over the massive reconciliation package. And we are talking about that this morning with New York Congresswoman Claudia Tenney. She is also a member of the Foreign Affairs and Small Business Committees. Uh, Congresswoman, it's always great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. So I guess my first question is, the Democrats have an opportunity to change their mind, right? They can go back to the drawing board and they can give up on the reconciliation uh, and they could change the reconciliation bill to something to, to lift the debt limit. But they're not doing that. Well, yeah. I mean, right now, AOC is actually demanding that, obviously, the infrastructure bill uh, and the reconciliation bill have to go together over, what is it, about $5.5 trillion. It's actually even more than that over time. But right now, they can always go back to the drawing board. They can actually work with Republicans. Can you imagine that? And come up with a, a deal in the House that maybe some of the, you know, we know that some of the Republicans, unfortunately, in my opinion, are sort of cynically taking this calculation that if they vote for infrastructure, you know, that, that they don't have to, that the reconciliation is not going to happen. But I would hate to see us helping them with this because this bill is a monstrosity. Both bills, even the infrastructure bill, is really only a small percentage really dealing with infrastructure as we understand it in the true sense. So I'm really concerned about the fact that we don't go back to the drawing board. And I think an important point is, you know, we this is the power game. We're in a blood sport. And I think Republicans need to recognize that not only is all this money and all this spending and all these taxes included in this, there's also language that has a subversive tone to it that's shifting all the balance of power back to the executive branch and giving them the discretion to make decisions that we're taking away from ourselves. So I think that's another, just a huge aspect of this that a lot of Republicans aren't seeing or aren't willing to stand strong on and vote no on both of these bills. So uh, Joe Manchin called the $3.5 trillion plan uh, fiscal insanity. What are the chances, Claudia, that nothing gets done uh, in this economic agenda? Well, I hope that nothing gets done on this, this economic agenda because I, just listening to you talking about where we are in a new quarter and what's going to happen if any of these things pass, we're going to see, we're going to go back to where we were before the Trump era policies where we actually cut taxes, you know, which is really important for small business owners, really important for individuals. And, and, and the Democrats actually, AOC, Bernie Sanders, they don't think this is enough and they don't understand the impact this is going to have on our, in our economy, you know, encouraging a welfare state, shifting the balance of power. And remember, it's interesting about all of this bill that, uh, that we need to understand. It all originated in the Senate with Bernie Sanders, a self-proclaimed socialist communist who's for authoritarianism. And actually, all appropriations bills should rightly originate in the House of Representatives under our Constitution. So this is a complete disruption of our system intentionally. And that's why you're seeing, you know, this, this massive amount of stuff just being thrown in and uh, Republicans being in a, in a disarray, too. Uh, but the Democrats, thankfully, some of them are going to hold out on this and not vote for it in the Senate. And it all comes down to Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, you know, these so-called moderates. And I, I might add, there, isn't any, there aren't any moderates left in the Democratic Party right now. Even if they were to vote on a modified version of this bill, it's still it's still yeah. putting in authoritarianism, communism, you know, a welfare type state and huge taxes, the highest tax increase in our nation's history.